previously, in my video called Formative Spooky Things from My Childhood, I mentioned a mod for Half-Life 1 called Action Half-Life, and a legendary map maker named Hondo. This is the continuation of that story. The concept of an action mod dates back to 1998 with Action Quake 2. The mod became so popular and influential that members of the community went on to create such mods as Counter-Strike and Action Half-Life. Action Half-Life had its first public release in 1999. It introduced elements of action films to Half-Life 1 Deathmatch, including things like stunt diving, modern day weapons, akimbo pistols, throwing knives, and even a form of bullet time called Adrenaline Rush. Chances are that most of you have never heard of this mod, but you've probably heard of one called The Specialists, a more Matrix-themed action mod that released several years later in 2003. It was, without a doubt, heavily inspired by Action Half-Life, expanded upon some of the same features and modes of play. The early 2000s was a renaissance of mod making. Tools for making custom models, textures, sounds, maps were more accessible than ever before thanks to the beginning of internet forums, IRC chat clients, free web hosting provided by places like Tripod, GeoCities, and Telefrag. So anyone looking to mod their favorite game had more resources and visibility than ever before. Many of you already know that one of my biggest interests are the mysterious aspects of video games. Any sort of unexpected, secret, convention-breaking thing hidden inside a game. Especially when designers put so much time and effort into them that they take on a life of their own. These days, things like easter eggs, ARGs have become so common that there's entire Discord communities and YouTube channels that regularly find and report them, spreading the word faster than ever before. However, the secrets I'm about to cover date back to around the year 2000. Internet communities were just beginning, social media wasn't a thing really, so newly discovered mysteries and games were shared person to person, sort of like folklore. Rumors and misinformation were everywhere, and it was very rare to see any actual recorded proof of anything. Oftentimes the stories surrounding the mysteries were more entertaining than the mysteries themselves. For an example of what I'm talking about, take a look at this 2010 article by Quinton Smith of Rock Paper Shotgun. He goes into great detail recalling the memories he had him and his friends trying to solve one of Action Half-Life's most infamous secrets in a map called 5AM. For the full article, I have it linked in the description below, but here's a few excerpts. You ever walk around a deathmatch map without anyone firing a shot? It's creepy. The map's still a dangerous place built from kill zones and bad angles, but without all the noise and adrenaline filling things up, you become aware of the presence of something else. Action Half-Life was also the favorite mod of a mad cabal of mappers who obsessed over easter eggs. But it started as routine additions of little secrets which elite players could show their friends quickly spiraled out of all proportion as AHL grew in popularity, and soon were being unleashed on the community with entire levels hidden inside them. And if the Action Half-Life community was the mecca for crazy mappers, then Hondo was God. The immaculate deathmatch maps Hondo constructed were dwarfed by the secrets buried underneath them. Areas so cruel, opaque, and imaginative, they felt like claustrophobic expeditions into a broken mind. Hondo. Most of what we know about him are details that he provided to us in his map description files, which are files that contained credits, resources used, and sometimes a bit of a backstory. He credits himself with the name Brian Hondo McClelland with an email of hondo at telefrag.com. Telefrag sadly went offline long ago. He mentions that he has a history of making maps as far back as Quake 1, Quake 2, Action Quake 2, and Action Half-Life. He also assisted a friend in the making of a mod called Scientist Hunt. Through playing his maps, you'll quickly catch on to the fact that he's a big fan of anime and a band called X-Japan. 
but perhaps one of his most memorable qualities is his dark sense of humor. Here are some examples of disclaimers that he left at the bottom of his notes. In his words, If you have any use for this level, besides simply playing it, then you should probably talk to me. If what you're doing will net you cash, then you must email me, or I will fly to your hometown and kill your entire extended family. Chances are, I will anyway. If you enjoyed this map, or hated it, or it won't work, or you want me to kill your whole family, please email me and tell me what you think. Early 2000s internet humor, ladies and gentlemen. Even though deathmatch-oriented games have no shortage of blood and gore, Hondo managed to take things a step further with depictions of murder, dismemberment, suicide, and a uh, suitcase girl. And finally, the maps. Hondo has a sizable portfolio of maps, but I narrowed it down to just these, based on intricacy of their secrets and the stories that they have to tell. Lock War, Hondo's Death House, 5am, No Credit, Endless Rain, and Endless Rain 2. A few things to note here. It was pretty difficult to find the correct versions of all these maps. There were a lot of missing textures, missing audio, some versions crashed the game, and some versions were so old they didn't yet contain a secret. It turns out that Hondo updated his older maps to add secrets to them, so having the right version was critical to making this video happen. Many of his secrets require two people to complete, so throughout the video you'll see me use admin mod to teleport and lower gravity, since I didn't have a secret hunting partner with me during the walkthroughs. I wanted to keep things as legit as possible, so cheating was kept to a bare minimum. I also want to take this time to thank all the resources that made this happen. All the old archived blog posts, server file repos, and the YouTube videos on the subject dating back 9 to 15 years ago. Channels like Sausages, Bob and a Lot, and Riveth. That nine year gap between the last time anyone covered all this was a big inspiration for me to put together my own take on all this. Lastly, I'd like to thank my teenage former self who spent much of 1999 to 2005 playing Half Life mods and being a part of a non killing Team Fortress classic server called the Silly Zone. There's a whole complex history behind that group too, but without them, I would never have known that Hondo's maps existed and the secrets that they contain. And because of that, it was around this time my interest in video game mysteries began. And another thing, I intentionally recorded footage in 1024 by 768 because I like things to be old and crusty just like they were back then, okay? I even considered using software rendering instead of OpenGL to make things feel even more authentic, but I decided against taking it that far. My final note, remember this. These maps were designed for a multiplayer deathmatch mod. You're meant to be running around with dozens of others, guns blazing, blood flying, loud noises. The people who spent the time carefully finding and solving these secrets we're making a big departure from the expected gameplay of Action Half-Life. Block War is one of Hondo's oldest maps. It was originally for Action Quake 2, but he ported it to Action Half-Life in 2001. It seems this was his first claim to fame due to how successful the action genre of mods were at the time. He describes the place as a large city map with a gun store, hotel, parking garage, sewer, and stuff. Among the breakdown of features, he boldly states, Secrets? Yes. I want to take a quick second to say that I may be the only person to both solve and document this secret. When I was doing research for this video, all I could find were people asking how to solve Block War's secret, but nobody had any answers. I was able to complete it using foggy childhood memories and a lot of trial and error, so go me.
As you can see, the map has a big hotel. And right off the bat, we're visiting the obligatory murder room. complete with loud music. It was common for action Half-Life maps to have a murder room somewhere and also an interactable stereo system. You never knew what sort of music you were going to get. As we head upstairs, you can see more hotel rooms some classic gold source rotating door gameplay. Roof access. Here's our first little secret. Normally a revolver spawns next to his body too. Things like this used to freak me out because I'd suddenly hear gunshots even though I'm alone in the server. Paranoia sets in. This door here is where our secret begins. I wonder how we can open it. Maybe the big electric generator next to it is related somehow. What can we interact with related to electricity? Perhaps light switches? Turn them off maybe? And it's open. Hondo's secrets involve dying. A lot of dying. Good thing I can save time by editing the video. Once you notice your body glowing at the bottom, it means you almost hit the correct spot.
some buttons kill you and some don't. After a long session of dying and taking notes, I found that the correct pattern spells out the word Bido, B-I-D-O. I googled it and a bunch of anime shows up, so that sounds about right. As you can see, the weird wall panel is now open. Walking in it puts you here, where you have no choice but to drown. I couldn't test this because I was alone in the server, but I believe the intention is for the puzzle solver to be put into the room while the rest of the server's players are teleported to these chambers. So you're forced to drown as another player witnesses your final moments. Moving on to Hondo's Death House. According to Hondo, this map was intended to be part of a scrapped mod idea, so he repurposed it for Action Half-Life. In his words, I made this level, and another, for a mod that never got off the ground. I won't go into detail, but it involved a small child at home alone and a bunch of psychotic murderers breaking into the house with axes and hammers and shovels. Sounds about right. As you can see, he likes to scatter these random photos all over his maps, and I believe long ago people attempted to identify every one of them. Here we see the first ex-Japan band reference, a group that we will see and hear from a lot in later maps. Here we also see the first appearance of The Hands Resist Him, also known as The Haunted Painting of eBay. If you want to know more about this creepy painting, the YouTuber Wang did a great video on it. This is actually one of my favorite complete house maps for Half-Life 1. I remember this getting ported to a lot of other mods. It was often used as a sort of roleplay map.
So here's where the secret begins. First, you press this painting, then make a run for the garage. Here we have a little hub world for the remainder of the secret. This sort of vibrant high contrast style is one that Hondo thoroughly embraces throughout the rest of all of his secrets. Progress is visibly tracked by the color strips on the back wall. It's a very nice touch. And you can see here that the red laser dot attachment will actually be pretty useful in later maps because Hondo likes to surround you with solid colors that make it hard to sense depth. And the dot will give you an idea of how close the walls you are. the end. Here's the first of several disgusting images we'll come across. Based on the text, I think maybe this is Hondo? Take note of the road barricade. This will become a bit of a meme for the rest of his maps. Guess I'll die.
5 a.m. This is the big one, the one that put Hondo on the map, and by far the most documented and remembered by Action Half-Life players. This map has four or more versions floating around on the internet, so be sure to find specifically AHL underscore 5 AM for the full experience. It was originally released in 2000 with no secret, and a year later a small easter egg credit was added, but it wasn't until 2002 that we would get the full secret treatment. In Hondo's words, It's just about to break on morning. The sky is no longer black, but you're still wide awake and shooting people in their faces. A typical day, I would guess. He goes on to say, This version adds a respectable secret, so he doesn't even try to hide it. And now, the hints. These are all I will ever give. If you email me asking for hints or solutions, I will delete your mail and hate you forever. When you see me type in the server chat there in the bottom left, I'm typing a percent sign followed by the letter L. This will automatically tell you the mapper given name for the current area, which will become more important when I tackle the story driven maps. 5am doesn't really have a story, it's just meant to be sort of an obscure puzzle solving gauntlet of sorts. Note, another barricade blocking part of a road. And here's the murder room, coincidentally doubling as the J-Rock room this time around.
targets on a timer, so just shoot as fast as you can until you hear the invisible door on the right open up. Here we have the first occurrence of the HC Hondo Corp logo, which will become a major story element in later maps. And we're in. 12 puzzles to go. The first six puzzles actually have two solutions apiece, but I will only be completing the primary ones first. You just need to touch the ceiling to make the blue box appear and then land on top of it. Action Half-Life has a long jumping feature which gives you a little bit more height. So if you run and crouch jump and sort of spiral around in a circle like this, you'll have an easier time reaching the blue box. On to number two. Unfortunately, there's a problem I'll often run into where even though you've successfully completed a puzzle, it doesn't recognize it, so you just have to start over and try it again. Okay, very important. Huge flashing lights warning for puzzle number three there will be rapidly strobing full screen colors for a couple minutes. I don't even have any kind of light sensitivity and it still really hurts my eyes to look at this one. So for this, you need to walk to the cube in the middle of the room. So just keep the cube centered on your view and spiral around it clockwise. You'll keep getting closer and closer until you eventually go into it and you complete it. Flashing lights warning is over for a little bit, but we unfortunately need to revisit it later in the second phase, so I'll give another warning when that comes around. For number four, we go from strobing light headache to motion sickness headache. Just keep running against the rotation until you drop down through the invisible openings. 
And again, you're just trying to get to the cube. So the clock skipped over number five. Hmm. For six, we get to enjoy an eye strain headache. This room actually has three different purposes, but for the first part, we just need to crouch jump along the wall until you find this little ramp that takes you to the top. And then you go up the stairs and jump into the purple square. Number seven. Pear smash. A pit full of blood where a giant pear kills anyone that goes into it. There's no secret walls or buttons, so how do we defeat the pear? Well, that takes us to phase two. So we get to revisit all the previous puzzles and find the secret hidden checkered red and blue buttons. And once we find all those buttons, we will return to the checkered red and blue room. For puzzle one, you just need to crouch walk against the wall until you find this little chamber that contains the first red blue button. For two, here you just need to ride the truck beyond the white square, go through the wall, and there's the cube. Flashing lights warning yet again for number three. It's really bad. All right, so for number three, you just got to get up close to the cube again, but instead of going into the big cube, you're going to crouch and slowly walk around the perimeter until you fall down into a little chamber where you will find the red and blue cube, press it, jump back up, and you've completed it. The cube inside four is actually hidden above us in the ceiling. You're supposed to stack on top of another player to reach it, but I'm just going to lower gravity, jump up, and push the button that way. You might be able to long jump and reach it too, but I've never been able to do that. Skipping number five. So for six, the red and blue room has a hidden red and blue cube.
It's very hard to see, but it's over here sticking out of the wall. You have to long jump over to it, and I don't think you can get back without falling down. Maybe if you're really skilled or something. Now, to defeat the pair, you have to have a pair of people. Two people. One person lures the pair down, and one person waits on top of the red-blue room until you see the word pair smash and the screen shake. And as soon as you see that, you press the button and run up the stairs. You're teleported on top of the pair. Pair defeated. Number eight is supposed to have you running and hiding from these tank turrets that will shoot at you, but unfortunately in the latest build of Action Half-Life, these turrets crash the game. So for the video, I had to edit the map file to remove them entirely. There might be another way to fix it. I don't know. This was the only one that worked. So it's not very challenging anymore, so all you have to do is stand on top of these blue squares. And eventually a cube appears in the middle of the room and you jump into the cube. So let's stop here for a minute. I didn't notice until after I'd completed recording everything and writing the script and all that, but apparently the map skips puzzle 9 also. I always knew that 5 was skipped, but apparently 9 is too? Hondo, please don't hate me for this, but I edited the map and I forced it to unlock number 9 using the same logic that it uses to unlock all the other puzzles. So here is never before seen footage of someone entering Puzzle 9. And nothing happens. I have a pretty firm understanding on how all these maps work having spent so much time with them, so I can tell you that there is just no puzzle number nine. There aren't even any teleport triggers here to send you to another puzzle or any code referring to it other than the basic labeling of this section of the clock. I do feel like this would be in character for Hondo though, to leave something unexplained like this just to annoy people. It's probably an inside joke among his friends or something. Anyway, here's Puzzle 10. For 10, you're going to need night vision or a flashlight. You're going to run through this big maze while a cube chases you and probably kills you many, many Times. The solution is really kind of random. At set intervals, a random person in the maze is teleported to a blue room and it will kill you. However, if you find this tiny little red blue checker crawl space, when it's your turn to be teleported, you'll go into the blue room and you'll complete the puzzle instead of being killed. All right.
Number 11 also requires two people, so I will be cheating a bit. You just need to press the buttons on both sides at the same time. Got to make sure that the doors to both of the rooms are closed when you do this, otherwise it will not work. Once that's done, the exit door will open, but also be sure to press the white button because it will unlock a little secret within the secret. If you jump and crouch into this tiny crawl space on the right, it will lower your gravity, which will prevent you from taking fall damage and will allow you to more easily complete number five, even though we haven't gotten to that yet. It'll also prevent you from dying if you fail a puzzle and it teleports you outside. Number 12. I can't show you what's here, but if you really want to see it, it's disgusting by the way. Google search the following cursed words. Suitcase. Girl. Anime. Gore. It should be the first result. Hondo seems to be a fan of dismemberment because we'll see something similar to this in another map later. A lot of people used to think that Suitcase Girl was the end of the secret, but there's actually another step to unlock number 5, and it's the light switch behind the water heater. Flipping the switch will teleport anyone who's in the suitcase room over to number 5. So you need two people to do this, so I cheated a little bit. And hey, look, I'm in number 5! So when you're in number five via the suitcase room, keep in mind that if you got to number five from the suitcase room, that the puzzle will have not been unlocked at the big clock hub area yet. It's your goal to find this little blue button in the corner to unlock it for everybody else. So to make number five easier on you, make sure that you get low gravity from the previous puzzle and it will make things a lot easier for you. The three teal boxes are actually teleports. The one on the left, I think, takes you to the clock. One on the right to the hotel. And the one in the middle is the ultimate reward. We've crossed over to the other side of the barricade, just like Hondo's Death House secret. The game refers to this as the Forbidden Street. I believe this is a reference to the Garden of Eden and the Forbidden Fruit. 
Almost all of Hondo's maps have these barricaded roads and people so badly wanted to cross over the other side to see what's there and they always asked if there's a way to do it. So he updated the map to give players the ability to get to the other side, but with a few steps in between. No credit. This is where the Hondo Corporation's story begins. In Hondo's words, a city area containing the Hondo Co. Federal Credit Union and Circle H Gas and Convenience, and a tunnel, these two businesses have been at a quiet war ever since some financial deals went bad. Neither believes the word the other says. Finally, something snaps. Tonight at sundown, while the area is closed off for road repair, they take the chance and go at it. Oh, and there is no secret. No, if there was one, it would only work in deathmatch and roundless team play. Also, sorry for using so many barricades. It's all I know how to do. I thought it was better in the realism trade-off than making roads that mysteriously go nowhere and come from nowhere. So right away we see another barricade of sorts. And another stereo system. We have a pair smash reference. Leet. Hacks. Sure is 2000s around here. You'll see me using the location tag a lot in this one because it's going to reveal some important story secrets, so keep an eye for the bottom left corner for some additional details. Barricade. Hondo's office. Interesting thing here is that Hondo himself is a character in this story, and believe it or not, he's the founder of Hondo Corp. And here's another case of the Hands Resist Him painting, the haunted painting of eBay. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want to learn more about this thing, check out Wang's video on YouTube. Set up them the bomb. We get signal. (laughs) 
here our journey begins. This area is called the Downward Descent. Welcome to Hondo Corp. Looks like they've been a little busy with something. And now we wait for two minutes. While we wait, let me get you all caught up on the story so far. Much of the story in Hondo's maps is delivered in pieces through his map descriptions, and it wasn't until the completion of his final action Half-Life map that we got a sizable lore dump that helped connect everything together. What I'm going to tell you is my own interpretation of the story based on these notes and the environmental clues that we find around the maps. The year is 1998. Hondo Corp is set on a greedy path to take control of the city. For unknown reasons, they felt compelled to expand their building further and further underground. Until one day, they broke through what is called a universal barrier. The center of reality a supernatural entity that sees all and maintains order in our chaotic world. Though this entity is still very young and defenseless, its unparalleled ability to control our reality is exactly the sort of power that Hondo Corp needed on its path to global domination, a supernatural form known as the Grethetalin. Fast forward to year 1999, Hondo Corp was deep into researching its wondrous new discovery. Unfortunately, things weren't going so well on the surface. The nearby gas company by the name Circle H refused to be bought out, causing rising tensions between the two companies. Late one night, in an attempt to infiltrate Hondo Corp, a Circle H employee broke into the nearby abandoned building discovered a path straight to the heart of Hondo Corp's dark secret. The events of No Credit depict Hondo Corp's violent retaliation to their secret having been discovered in an attempt to silence those who had seen too much.
With the Grithedalin destroyed, the world began to unravel into chaos. Into darkness. Hondo Corp's founder, Hondo, knew how delicate the balance of order and chaos was while in the presence of the Grithedalin, and as a precaution, he used its reality-manipulating powers to create what he calls the Happy Land, his own personal small pocket of reality safe from whatever the world would become if the Grithedalin were to be destroyed. It's here, on this private island, where Hondo would live out the rest of his life in peace. This is where the story comes to a pause until we get to the next couple maps. So it's a lot to take in. So basic summary is that Hondo Corp wanted to take over the world. They accidentally found the fleshy tunnels and eyeball creature called the Grethedalin. And yeah, it's not Hagrethedalin like we all thought. I found an audio file in one of the later maps of the announcer pronouncing it as Grethedalin. I still don't know what it means or if it's an anagram or something like that. This eyeball creature apparently keeps our reality in perfect balance. So when Honda Corp and Circle H Gas got into conflict, it caused someone, us, the player, to sneak in and kill it in self-defense, unaware that by doing so, we upset the balance of the world, tearing reality apart. Oh, and Hondo Corp's founder preemptively made this little island that he could escape to in the event that all this happened, which it did, so he made a wise decision. This decision will be an important plot point later. For a long time, it was thought that this place, the Happy Land, was the end of No Credit Secrets, but you can actually return to the darkness and find something a little bit extra. The Lonely Place 3. It's massive, and to get to the actual end of the secret, you need to aimlessly swim around through here while spamming the use key in hopes that you hit an invisible button that will take you to the real end. It helps to bring night vision goggles, and if you die here at least once, you can use your body as kind of a reference point to navigate around here. I swam around here for like 20 minutes before I finally decided to cheat. In my defense, back in the day, I did manage to complete this without cheating, so for the sake of time, here's what's supposed to happen.
No cash, no credit, no answer but this. The only story justification I can think of for this is with the world unraveling and the chaos, it's rapidly becoming a void of total darkness. And perhaps among this void are these little fragments of what our reality once was. Endless rain. The year is 2199. Things have changed. In a bizarre twist, Hondo Corporation were the ones who managed to put an end to the unraveling of reality. They were able to do so by means that would be revealed in the sequel to this map. Our world was left permanently damaged by the events of 1999. Humanity now endures 24 hours of endless rain acidic rain so corrosive that the natural world has been destroyed forcing everyone to reside in these enormous megastructures owned and operated by hondo corp the remaining members of humankind suffer from all kinds of health problems and violent crime is constantly on the rise in an attempt to sedate and control the masses hondo corp developed and distributed canned green liquid product called rocks complete with the slogan the answer to all of life's problems i've always really enjoyed the endless rain maps especially since you can hear the sound of rain everywhere you go with the bittersweet view of the acid rainfall and mega-structured landscape seen through the windows. Around these maps you'll find these sad little pockets of what's left of nature. Day weather forecast, rain. Here we have the front desk. This area will be important for the secret later. The elevators moving by themselves always spooked me a little when I was hunting alone in these servers.
You are on the clock. Maybe a reference to the 5 a.m. secret? We have several murder rooms this time around with violent crime on the rise. It canonically makes sense. Maybe they were under influence of some kind. As you might have guessed, we have another two-person puzzle. Now to figure out how to get to the other button. Shortcut unlocked. The map calls this area the supervisor's office. I see it is written in blood at the bottom there. Turn this off. Because you need two people for this, I'm going to have to cheat again real quick. BRB. Now, we get to take a sample of the mind-altering green drink, starting with a high.
And now for the crash. This room is referred to as the God's Cage. At the bottom you see the portrait of this guy again. So on a bit of a somber note, the man you see here is Hideto Matsumoto, also known as Hide. He was a very famous, respected member of Hondo's favorite band called X Japan. And in 1998, which would have been a couple years after this map was made, Hide was found dead in his apartment by an apparent suicide, so this ending must serve as a sort of tribute to Hide. Endless Rain 2, the conclusion to the Hondo Corporation story. The secret in this map is substantial, both from a gameplay standpoint and story progression. According to Hondo's notes, he originally scrapped this map partway through development, but his maps were so popular at the time that his fans desperately urged him to complete it, and I'm so glad that they did. Set only a couple years after Endless Rain 1, things somehow managed to get worse. The ever-increasing violence and chemical addiction problems escalated to the point where Hondo Corp began enforcing strict curfews and implanting people with mysterious devices. You awaken in your residential block to find out that something isn't right. Everybody's gone. The fish removed from the aquarium, transit system is closed, the outer doors are locked, and the main elevator no longer accepts your access card. They've trapped you up here, and the announcement system says curfew goes into effect in five minutes. Something's happening.
you discover that a terminal has been hacked. It displays the message, escape now or face a life of slavery. Keep in mind that all the maps we've seen are fundamentally just arenas for multiplayer deathmatching, so the entrance to an elaborate secret needs to be something that wouldn't happen by accident. The only clue Hondo left for us is swimming had made Edward tired, so he sat down to rest. Here at the transit station, we find a chair. Now, where can we go swimming? We're in. This place is called The Murder. Maybe someone is aware of the Grithedalan's death and isn't happy about it? They rigged their room's door to explode when the authorities inevitably come looking for them. However, we're going to use it to get out. Action Half-Life's ledge grabbing system isn't very intuitive, as you can see. Someone used a storage crate to block entry to the next room. I wonder what they're hiding.
sacrifices. now escaped the residential block and have entered a new center of reality. We've crossed over yet another universal barrier, but this one feels different.
Hmm, looks like they're trying to keep people out. They're doing a good job. Grethelin 2199. It can't be harmed this time, so I gotta find a different way out. record scratch. Before I continue, let's catch up on the story so far. Brace for this. What we just saw was Hondo Corp's greatest creation yet, a synthetic revival of the Grithedalin. In the years of chaos following the events of 1999, the remaining members of Hondo Corp salvaged what they could of the former Grithedalin. Their research taught them how critical this entity was to the stabilization of reality, so it was in their interest to scrap it back together to restore order to the world, but it was also in their interest to use it to manipulate reality in their favor. This newly crafted Grithedalin would be used to stabilize reality and to alter the composition of the atmosphere, causing the endless acidic rains, forcing people to flock to the many Hondo Corp controlled megastructures. Humanity grew dependent on Hondo Corp. All aspects of their lives were under Hondo Corp control, which led to the severe decline of everyone's mental and physical health. This next part wasn't explicitly mentioned in Hondo's notes, but my theory is that the Grithedalin is ultimately a benevolent being. It just wants to maintain balance with its all-seeing eye. But when its own existence is threatened, it may use its powers to manipulate humans to do its bidding. My theory is that the many murders that we encountered in Endless Rain 1 were the result of Grithedalin 2099 manipulating people to become murderous to bring down Hondo Corp from the inside out in an attempt to free itself from its synthetic prison. In Endless Rain 2, we came across a murder room, someone who appeared to be selectively taking people out in the name of the Grithedalin. The sudden increase in deaths in this residential block caused authorities to evacuate and lock down the whole building, leaving just you, the player, inside. This was the perfect moment for you to break out and follow the trail of blood to the new center of reality, discover the existence of Grithedalin 2199, and change the course of humanity forever. Just what it wanted. Now, where were we? The Tomb of the Shed Captain.
We've gone back to 1999, the unseen depths of the original Grithetalin. It's our old friend, but this time we are not going to kill it. If you kill it, you get a bad ending and nothing changes. If you swim in the chamber below it, you'll find this glowing shaft near this big mouth. Destroy the hanging tendrils, and we get this message. Rathedalin has been wounded, but not killed. He seals himself off for decades, growing stronger. He is not killed in 1999 by local employees, and Hondo Co. cannot use their replacement eye to order reality to their own ends. A rift forms in time. We've changed the course of history. By only wounding the Grithedalin, it became afraid, and denied Hondo Corp. from continuing their research, thus preventing the abuse of reality manipulating power. However, when you injure a supernatural entity with powers beyond human comprehension, it's going to remember that. And when it's had some time to think about what you did, with the course of history changed, what does the world of 2199 look like now? Consumed.
So who was the shed captain? According to the map notes, Hondo, the founder of Hondo Corp, who created his private pocket reality that we visited and no credit, spent the remainder of his life pondering how to reverse the grim direction the world was headed towards at the hands of the reckless corporation that he created. His solution? Time travel. However, his creation, known as the Time Shed, took the entirety of his life to complete and would never see the light of day. Once the future Hondo Corp restored order via Grethetal in 2199, the remains of their founder were eventually discovered, and his body was entombed, conveniently, at the new center of reality along with the suspicious device he had invented. Little did they know his device would be used against them centuries later. And that was the story of Hondo Corporation. What else is there to say about all this? Hondo, the real guy, not the fictional version, seems to have either changed names or disappeared off the internet around 2010-ish. It looks like he used to run a website called Johnny the Midget. After looking into this website, all that I'll say is that it's not good to research your uh, heroes. I understand that it was the early 2000s edgy internet phase. He was probably in his 20s then, so that's a recipe for disaster. The website went offline about 2013, so he probably wasn't too proud of it either. I mean, it's nothing really bad. He just had a whole lot of very niche interests that he liked to share with everyone and thought it was a good idea to archive hundreds of IRC conversations between him and his friends from 2000 to 2010. Those will definitely age well, right? However, I did find out that he made this badass website for Grethetalin.com. In this archived version, you can see abstractions of all of his Easter eggs on the side there, and sadly there's some broken images. But we get some awesome official art that we don't see in the game. Most of the images here link to some file called hgthlove.zip, which of course is broken, so I'm sad I'll never get to see what was in the zip. Or maybe I don't want to know. Oh, and there's a friend of his wearing a Grithetalin shirt. Oh, I want one of those. Digging through his old website did teach me that a lot of the things we experience in his maps were inside jokes among him and his friends before they became maps, so that's pretty interesting. When I was browsing around ModDB, I found what appears to be an abandoned Left 4 Dead 2 project called Sleepless, and it has a description of, if you are an action Half-Life fan, you might recognize Hondoko as the most sadistic corporation ever. Don't mind the secret campaign in the campaign. Man, it's a shame that this was abandoned because I definitely would have enjoyed playing this and probably making a video about it. And it was being made by Tundra Cool, who is a highly respected modder in the Half-Life modding community. There are still a few random traces of the Grithetalin left online, including this DeviantArt post. Someone on my Steam friends list, who actually was once a part of the original Silly Zone group where we researched these maps, he has the Grithetalin as his profile picture. The Grithetalin continues to live even into the year 2022. I'll finish things off here with a quick look at some of the people and things that inspired me to make this video. Most of these things are 10 or more years old, so let's take a look at some old stuff.
this lands you here. This is a different part of the Hondo Corp building, and some very bad stuff has been happening here. There we go. Hagreth the Dellum. Your home. Or someone's home. That guy's home? Hopefully not. Hopefully that isn't Hondo. I highly doubt it. This is the final room of no credit. An empty white room with a light. Metallic. And here's me spelling F-U with knives. Thanks for watching. So, you know, you've got to be careful. I think those things there are turrets, so or tanks or something. We've got to walk over all of these blue areas and be careful not to die. One person has to push. One person has to open this and stay here while the other person goes back to the hotel in the main game. So, I think. Seeing as we have to censor this a little bit, it would be best if the lovely assistant stayed in the room with the... Well, whatever's in there, okay? Okay, so... This is like... A sequel to No Credit. Um, basically. Which sounds really stupid, and it kind of is. It kind of really, really is stupid. Um, but... Alright, so what the thing is, is we're in the future now, and Hondo Corp, which is one of the groups from the previous map, um, now, like, they own the world, or whatever. Um, and in no credit, you kind of killed uh, that unpronounceable named god that people mentioned in the thread, and uh, Hondo Corp decided to make a new one. And I just feel like a terrible person for saying all this. So let's just get on with it. Alright, see this chair? we got to get that downstairs. Full of boxes. And so on. Okay, first of all, up here. Oh, dear. Uh, this took me like three days. Like three entire days to get through last time I did it. Hopefully it won't take me that long this time. But if it does... Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, that was fun. And that's that! Thank you very much for watching. This has been Nemesis of Moles and his lovely assistant walking you through Hondo's AHL 5AM. Hope you all, all had fun. Hopefully I can do Block War and HD House next. Keep posting rad stuff in the thread. See you later, lovely assistant. What the hell am I doing with my life? So I finished editing the video when I realized that I'm five minutes away from making it exactly two hours. Two hour video, how did this get so long? So as a bit of unplanned bonus content, I'm going to speed run two more Action Half-Life Easter eggs that have nothing to do with Hondo. First we have AHL Banana Mans, one of my favorite Action Half-Life maps, also called Banana Mansion by the highly skilled mapper Banana aka Dirk Schreier. The original map was titled Wicked Mans by Rawhide aka Ted Lambert. But Banana came in and made it look significantly better and added a little chess-related easter egg. So here's a very brief run-through of some of the highlights of the map. I don't understand chess enough to know exactly what's going on here, but maybe someone in the comments can explain. I believe black is in check, and it's white's turn, 
So in order to defeat Black, you move the queen over here. Careful not to bump into anything else. Move Black this way one square. Move the rook here. And there it is. Black is defeated. Thank you to Pira T. Jerome on YouTube for sharing the solution with us back in 2012. Next up, we have another favorite map of mine titled Bank Doom, originally created by Russell Weed, a.k.a. Doom Maniac, who designed the map after his actual workplace of a check processing center. Then our hero, Dirk Schreier, a.k.a. Banana, swooped in, gave the map a visual overhaul, and snuck in a little Easter egg. Here's a couple highlights of the map. sure you have the assault rifle selected go to this door jump on the window frame and shoot a few times near where the tree trunk meets the wooden fence you're trying to hit a really tiny button that opens up the secret not all the guns penetrate glass so I think the assault rifle is important once you think you've hit it run over to the opposite side of the hall and these doors will be opened they will close behind you I believe the name that you see at the end is the person who composed a lot of the original music that you hear in Action Half-Life, someone named Borg. Anyway, enjoy the secret. This is it, the end of the video, finally. Creating this video was a major nostalgia blast to the face, and it makes me grateful for having been a teenager with unlimited free time during the early 2000s, a time when modding first took off and there was always some new exciting maps or whatever to play every week, keep me coming back to games like Half-Life years after it released. A big thank you to all the creative and innovative people, such as Hondo, that exceed our expectations about what can entertain us and scare us in a multiplayer game. And finally, thank you to anyone who watched this video. I had a fun time making it, and I hope you had a fun time watching it. I'll see you all next time.